Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining. Today we'll be we will be making stuffed chicken breast. Relaxing Sunday. I have a few um, fresh vegetables actually from a friend's garden. Squash, butternut squash. And I will be making potatoes as well. Mashed potatoes. Cheese Incorporated. Italian and mozzarella. Y'all know how I do it. Sunday, I'm cooking dinner. And I am also using stove top chicken f flavor. Or y'all know how it is. It's stove top for chicken or whatever like that. But you know you uh, go ahead and mix it and match it like you... Um, don't judge me that I'm using stove top, okay? <laughs> so, um, some people don't like to use stove top. Um, down south is dressing up north is stuffing. Hey, let me know your uh, views on it. I have some roasting pans over here to the right of me. Yes, I just opened that with my teeth. <laughs> My food, y'all, a little unsanitary. Would never do something like that with someone else's food. Let me get my parchment out for my um, pans. Okay. So it's just a relaxing day. I'm gonna be switching cameras, switching views. Y'all know how I do. I'm just gonna to operate today. Um, very minimal talking. I may come back in with a voiceover. But uh, until then, just enjoy the music. I have chicken breast here. It's a pack. We got one, two, three, four, five, maybe six or seven of them. That I, and this is parchment paper that was on top. So there was no um, additional bacteria getting on top of it. But this is brine chicken that I already brined earlier. I already kind of pre-seasoned it. I'm going to sear it on the stove. And then I'm going to uh, stuff them. And then I'm going to put it in the oven. Some people stuff it and then they go ahead and uh, put it in the uh, pan to sear. And then they uh, go directly into the... Um, into the oven <laughs> there's a method to my madness um you know the chicken sometimes draws up or whatever like that when you sear them so i like to sear them off first even though it's hot i still work with them um with gloves and stuff like that even though they're going back into uh the oven i make sure i do all that so let me get a little set up move completely out of the way so you all can see and then we can get started. Um, the only thing with this stove top, I'm just gonna incorporate more moisture so it's not dried out, cause it is gonna go into the oven which draws out uh, moisture even more and already stove top is a thick consistency that can get dried out uh, pretty fast. This is only one pack, it should scratch. So um, I actually might use a little bit of cheese to um, use to bind it or whatever like that for the, um, for the stuffing and then uh, stuff it. Um, that way, yeah, it will have cheese in the chicken and also cheese in the mashed potatoes. Y'all know that <laughs> when I be doing my recipes or like that, I will be seeing what I got in the refrigerator. Most times, you know, it could be a little different and stuff and stuff like that. Uh, but I told you, I'll go out the dome or whatever like that. Um, I love to cook and, um, you know, even with these mixed vegetables, I kind of want to do a, um, something different with them. So I won't say what it is until it's complete because it may change. All right, so as of right now, yes, we got mixed vegetables, stuffed chicken, and mashed potatoes. What else? Um, that's going to be it. I wanted to do some string beans, but I need to get rid of these mashed potatoes. I mean, these uh, um, mixed vegetables that I had in my refrigerator. And um, I don't want them to go to waste. They're fresh from the farm, like I said, from a friend. So I'm going to use these. And it's only me, you know... Um, eating um maybe one other person would like that but it's definitely <laughs> enough for more than two people 
I already washed my hands, but I'm gonna do it again. I already have my pot in the sink already with water filled up. I'm going to cut these potatoes up and get them right in the pot and right on the stove. They're gonna take the longest to cook. This chicken is brined, so it's gonna sear. That's gonna even cook it even more. So by the time it gets in the oven, it's gonna be nice and tender, and it is going to uh, not take that long. So my potatoes are going on first. These vegetables are going to be roasted off. I'm gonna draw the moisture out so there's no liquid or fluid. Um, and then I'm going to um, season them. Um, season them lightly, get them in the oven so they can uh, cook, then come back out and season them a little bit more. Um, Cause with all that moisture and draw it out or whatever like that, you'll waste your seasoning and stuff like that when you, um, when you do that so let's get started stop talking kareem okay y'all forgot one important thing yes it's important can you guess what it is Yeah, child, I forgot my wine. I'm gonna go ahead and get my chicken on. I was not going to do that, but now I am operating in my speed. Since I have caught you up, I am using a little bit of this Yes used oil. A little bit, just a little bit. We're not frying, we are searing. So we just want a little bit of oil to coat the uh, pan. By the way, guys, this is a very quick meal. Not too quick, but it's quicker than the other ones that I've done in the past, which I am not mad about. So I'm also searing my chicken off because I'm going to use that um, sook, which you should be familiar with by now, to add in my um, stove top to incorporate some more flavor and uh, also to create a quick stock or excuse me, a quick broth. Do you know the difference between broth and stock? Stock is usually um, the juice bone marrow or 
well yeah the juice or the bone marrow excuse me the juice from the bone marrow or the bones and I still say that wrong the bone, bone marrow is completely different but it's the liquid and the juice or however you want to say it um, from the bones and broth is any type of juice rendered or from the actual meat of the stock. Okay. potatoes are here they're going on um da, 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 da. let's throw them in the back the grease is hot <laughs> okay so that's good that's good uh potatoes are on I'm gonna salt and pepper the potatoes i told y'all i'm not gonna season them until later on excuse my reach in the camera Getting ready to drop this chicken into the pan because it's super hot. That is the most beautiful sound in the world. Careful, do not get pop. breadcrumbs I'm adding in is actually breadcrumbs that I pulverized the stove top with when I was, um, oh excuse me, um, I don't know if y'all heard me, <laughs> let me repeat it again, um, my mic microphone is over here and I'm looking into the camera, so I'm adding some uh, pulverized um, breadcrumbs into the actual stove top and the breadcrumbs is from the stove top so it's the same thing, it'll give it a different consistency, it'll bind it even more um, for a good stuffing. Uh, what else? Let me add some butter. Half a stick of butter. Adding more water and liquid. 
going to uh, add the, the oil from the chicken momentarily. This is on very, very low, so it's fine. But yeah, I actually um, didn't even complete my train of thought. The um, breadcrumbs I uh, pulverized for a breaded, crusted fish that I did. Um, and you know, breadcrumbs are bread, doesn't go bad. So I had it in the um, in my uh, cabinet. You know what? Hold on. I'm glad I caught that the damn potato wasn't even on. I would have been mad. Make sure these are on low. Get to that, get to that. All right, let me check these to make sure. I remember I did a tutorial on how to cut butternut squash so we should be caught up. I don't have my waste bucket today guys because I am not prepping much. Y'all remember that, right? Squash. That, uh, those seeds is what carries the moisture, you all. So uh, if you want something that doesn't require moisture, remove them. I'm going ahead and I'm uh, taking care of it the oven so I'm not worrying about it so remember we have to get the middle out Get ready to add a little bit of juice in here. Let me uh, continue to cook and uh, gain those juices back. I'm pretty much just moisturizing and adding liquid to the 
step in. So I just added a lot more water so this can moist up because it's going to thicken back up. And like I said, I'm creating a um, quick stock with this chicken flavoring. I'm gonna cover it um, and actually Cover these potatoes so they can cook faster. Chicken is only searing, so this is the color. And it'll continue to cook into the in the oven. put these to the side I'm gonna have to work with them anyway so I'm gonna put them on this plate so I can use this pan or either clean it I'm gonna clean it by uh, adding a little bit of water so I can get the rest of this but I'm not gonna add any more mm, yeah I'm not gonna add any more, more any more water I have enough in the pot already even if it does thicken up, that should be fine. So we have our chicken ready to go. I'm getting ready to throw the vegetables in the oven. I can prep that up in about five minutes if I do it now <laughs> and not talk anymore. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna concentrate on that for two seconds. Add a little bit more juice in there. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water so I can release this soak off. Just a little bit. Boil it off. A little bit. Boil it off. Okay. I'm going ahead. I got my parchment paper. Boom. Boom. That's ready. How many more? One more.
and I'm cooking these separate. All right, I'm turning the stove, the stuff is back on. Look at that, remember what I said guys? Moisture reduces the soot. So you see just pretty much a little bit of broth and um, not much left of residue on there. Same thing with this pot, it was all brown and crusted, got a little stock. Okay, adding it into the dressing or stuffing, whatever you wanna call it. Okay. Well, in my opinion, the, the difference between dressing and, and, and stuffing is the dairy that Southerners usually put in their in their um, dressing, pretty much milk and eggs or whatever else they add. Sometimes I know how to make dressing as well. I do a mean dressing. gonna rinse these bad boys off, these vegetables. Cutting them small so they can cook faster, roast faster. The oven is on 350. That's a good temperature for both vegetables and chicken. Like I said, I'm going to throw these vegetables in the oven. The stuffing for the chicken is working. The chicken is done, sitting on the side here, cooling off just a little bit. Here in the Atlanta area, I offer cooking classes to beef up your skills. Okay, see, nice small pieces so they'll cook uh, evenly and faster. Adding a little oil, salt, pepper, garlic, onion, powder. Use my reach, my seasonings are on that side. <coughs> that pepper, Lord. Steak seasonings on vegetables are excellent. FYI.
some soy sauce. I did say I was going light season this, didn't I? Little apple cider. Apple cider vinegar as a sweet texture that gets lost because this is going to be savory. You're not going to be able to taste it. So, just lightly seasoned or whatever. You know. I'll bring it back out and season a little bit more. Give it a little taste test. So these are going in the oven already. Let's take care of our last one, which is the butternut squash. Careful, I just cut these in half long ways. That way you see this dimension here, you get almost perfect cubes, so they'll cook faster and even. Um, butternut squash is a root, so it is already takes some time to cook. Wash this cutting board off and then we're going to work with our meat. So y'all know I like to create flavor profiles and then once they mix together, they balance. So I'm already just already thinking ahead. I use a little bottle. Um, uh, Lord. Um, Gar masala had a, for my uh, squash. I'm adding just a little bit of brown sugar to the uh, butternut squash. Between that and the apple cider, it will have a little definition. Same uh, onion powder, garlic powder. Salt. It's a root, so it requires a little extra. A little oil. Anything you're roasting, make sure you add oil. I'm gonna use these little tongs. Go ahead and incorporate this here. Now, I know already that I salted these pretty good. Just a little bit of sugar content. This is more basic. Um, that garam masala does have uh, that uh, cardamom and different uh, sweet elements in there. So, they'll go ahead and blend well here. Because I'm only cooking them separate because of the cooking times that they require. And I'm adding them back together. So, they should create a, a nice uh, flavor profile and balance. They're going in the oven now. I can already smell that shit. Smells so good, Lord. 
uh, I can already see, and that's just the vegetables. Okay, let's see what we're working with with our, um, nothing but vegetables so I just rinsed it off okay yeah so anything like that package like stovetop and, and dressing or whatever like that you're just moist uh, moistening the elements in the package and then it you know it dries back out or whatever like that so you can just add and develop and develop and develop flavors to no other I didn't even season it I still want to see what I'm working with I don't usually like to season that too much because of the flavoring of the chicken and everything ah. tastes regular just a little kick and hit and notch up of flavoring so it's not too bland. That's garlic powder, guys. It's just powder. <laughs> don't, get, um, don't get scared. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a little looser because of the amount of water I put in there, but I already know it's going to thicken up in a minute and with the cheese and everything else. So it'll bind all those flavors together and then we can go ahead and work with it and uh, add it into the chicken. And it'll, it'll look a little crazy or whatever like that, um, slightly. And then I, you know, you'll see the finishing touches at the end after it comes out of the oven. Like I said, this is already, like I said, this is a quick meal. The vegetables are already in. All they're doing is roasting most likely. I don't have to add any more seasons to it. This chicken is already ready to go and ready for me to, um, to work with it. And if you can see, guys, it's still so much juice and that is draining off. Which is good. That's what we wanted to do so it's not entrapped. I'm going to go ahead and put these on our cutting board and line them up so we can work with them. And then you will get a different view while I stuff them. You can do this with anything. I've stuffed so many different types of chicken breast, so many different ways with different ingredients, spinach, artichokes, which I have in here, but I'm not going to use them. Uh, Sun-dried tomatoes, whatever uh, you feel like doing. Excuse Um, yep. I'm gonna move this potatoes to the other eye. It's a little hotter. But those potatoes should be coming close to being done soon. Using a skewer to test them. So not quite, but almost. I know I lightly season these potatoes. They're gonna need a lot more when they come out, but I'll probably do something real crazy. Not too much crazy, but a little crazy with the mashed potatoes just to get a different profile. And I don't like tasting the same food, y'all. I like different stuff. So I've had turmeric potatoes. Y'all seen that in one of my other videos. I did turmeric uh, mashed potatoes. Mm 
I just cheated a little bit. I tasted a piece of the um, chicken and it's nice um, and seasoned. Um, it's fine on the salt. So that means I know I don't have to do too much to the rest of the elements for the chicken, which is the filling and all that or whatever like that. So we're good. I might add a little bit more herbs on top of it uh, before it goes into the other um, oven. Definitely some dill weed and probably some other things that we'll see momentarily. I told you I'm going out to the dawn. I'm just doing what I love to do. Adding this cheese in here. It's only a little bit. Let's see what we can do in a minute here. I don't want to use that other mozzarella cheese because that's for the potatoes. <laughs> and I got more cheese in my freezer. I just, for some reason, I'm trying not to use it. That's really because I'm low key plotting on making macaroni and cheese soon. I haven't had it in so long, not mine at least. And so I'll be craving certain stuff. So our chicken is lined up. Give me a minute to catch up on dishes. I like to clean as I go, cause when I turn off the camera, I'll be sitting down. I don't know what y'all be doing. And you came in and knocked me out my face. All right, we're back. Oh yeah. That was only a little bit of cheese, y'all, but already this thing thickened up real nice. And I think I'm gonna leave it just like that. If I thicken it up anymore, it's gonna be <laughs> real rich <laughs> once uh, it comes out of the oven. So that's real moisturized and stuff. I wanna make sure my chicken stays moisturized. I wanna make sure that, um, the, uh, so you see, 
like I said, it looks crazy. It looks like slop, but like I said, everything is going to balance and um and um it's going to cook and crisp up and bind up and everything like that um in the chicken. So I want to change your view in one second. Uh, I'm going to retaste this stuffing and make sure that it's to my liking. I think I'm about to add like some more seasonings because it's just a little too bland for me. All right, y'all, sorry about that. I wanted to get that right. I'm to get my pans for my chicken. I'm going to use parchment paper for the bottom. One, two, four, six, that bitch should be fine on one tray. Vegetables are smelling beautiful. You don't know how to love me.
give me one moment guys I'm going to stir the chicken in one second I'm adding more seasonings to our chicken um, to the stuffing or what we're going to stuff the chicken with And this still made a lot of stuff and then I actually was able to stretch it and it's not going to get all used so I might All right, so this is the reason why I wanted to cook it all first. You see how they, I mean, they're not that much different sizes, but still you can see clearly the definition. And I usually line them up in, in um, like this, this, all usually like the same way. Like this is the top part of all of the pieces of chicken. You can tell the bottom has the lines in it and it doesn't look too pretty. So I usually line them up, make sure that they're all right there. And then I find my incision where I'm gonna cut it at and where I'm going to stuff it. So for this one, I can already tell I'm gonna cut it right there. That, 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 this one on that side. You know what I'm saying? You wanna make sure that this, the back part or wherever the middle is, you have the most room or the most uh, area to work with. If I cut it here, it wouldn't make sense because this is already, Look at it, you see? I wouldn't cut it here. I would cut it here, have this part open, and that, that way it's, it's stuffed and packed into the thick part of the chicken. And it's just for better presentation. That's it. I mean, really for cook as well, too, because if, if you go into the incision all the way, you're not going to have stuffed chicken. You're going to have like a mess or either sometimes people, you know, depending on the presentation, sometimes they even just put it right here. Uh, and it looks like, you know, um, it's just a couple of different ways or many ways you can do 
with uh, presentation and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start the incisions and then I'll kind of show you with my hands while I pack it in. I'm going to get it right on the tray and I'm going to get it into the oven. So I can go ahead and finish off the potatoes that are already done boiling. They're ready to be seasoned, mashed, and the cheese to add in. I told you this is a quick meal. Um, we're at an hour right now and I was actually prepping as well. So you have to remember that, like I said, usually have your meat supplies already ready to go and then start cooking. Don't do it during unless you're experienced and you can multitask and you can get everything done in time. So uh, all of my previous videos, my little um, teaching moments, you can see uh, what I am talking about um, at this point in time and different things while I'm operating and moving at the same time. The vegetables are almost done. I can smell them. I already checked them a little while ago. So I am multitasking, like I said. Uh, the stuffing is, I mean, the dressing is here. I added some more seasonings. It's uh, pretty good. So it should be a good balance for the chicken. The chicken is already seasoned. It's fine. I'm going to add a little bit more dill weed just to give it, and probably some oregano and sage on top just to give it a little bit more color definition. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to get a second taste. So last thing, and I'm not going to talk no more for a minute. Uh, I'm just placing my hand on top, and I'm making the incision, and it's already made. I'm already, I already did it. With, with that, you can kind of do it with your finger too, without, without breaking the meat. But I use the incision on the side that I told you. Can you tell the difference now? The incision is on this side. It's open here. You got almost like a little pita pocket, and then you can just go ahead and force. Um, or you know stuff not for us, but just stuff stuff it in there and um, you know it'll be a little bit hanging out and it'll be a little protruded as well and um, you know look at that big pocket you got a big pocket now to stuff all that in now if I had to get it from here or if you go in too much you'll cut it straight through and you don't want that And if I and if you've seen it, um, I told you this was brine, which means there was acid added, was salt added, so sodium cooks things. It's a, it's the acid, so if you add it on raw meats, it will cook it. Uh, that is how uh, um, tar tuna tartare is made with acidity while you cook the uh, meat to safe temperatures. If you looked in here, it wasn't all raw and bleeding. It's pretty much already cooked. So when you put it in the oven, you do not have to put it in there for too long. You do not want to dry out your meat. You do not want to dry out your stuffing. Um, and yeah, you're just, you know, bonding everything together, baking it off, uh, melting the cheese, having those uh, ingredients incorporate from heat, from temperature, and everything else, which is similar. So, and just make sure you don't cut your hand while you're placing your hand on the top, okay? So now we're stuffing, okay? I do have um, gloves on, um, so yeah. I'm just taking a little bit and I'm stuffing it. Now this um, usually uh, sometimes the stuffings are are more uh, textural or bulky. This one here is more. Um, I don't want to say pasty and then make people have turned up their face but I can't help what people are going to do anyway but yeah it's more pasty but I um you know I created it like that because I know the end result that I'm looking for and what it's going to give it's going to give like a um a crisp on the outside and more of a creamy um textural but like I said pasty um you know uh flavor inside while the chicken is tender and textural as well and it'll be balanced So I'm using my hand to actually stuff and guide and clean. And what I mean by that is, you know, you want to clean the sides. You don't want it all caking out because then it'll cook like that. So you see this nice, how it's, you know, um, not too much, you know, because uh, you do want it to have some type of presentation or definition, but that's good. You got it all the way stuffed. It's sticking out a little bit. All this is going to be crisp up. It's going to look really good. So I'm going to put that on the 
on the tray is finished already. And sometimes you can get a good amount in there. Sometimes you only get a little bit, but you know, it's, it's how it works. And uh, like I said, if you use your hand and push deep and then uh, slide down or whatever, um, then you'll get, you'll get it good or whatever. Cooking is so sexual. It's so funny. I was in culinary school and everything the instructor said, we're all like, huh, gah, 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 laughing and everything like that. You know, of course, I ain't gonna lie, but fuck it. I'm still immature sometimes. I'll be laughing at everything. You know, uh, humor is good for the soul. So, but yeah, anything you say, stuffing and pushing and sliding down, you know, it's so sexual. So, you know, us as being younger at that time, just, you know, all laughs and jokes and even still do it now, you know. But uh, cooking is just, it's just so, it's so, uh, it's such a um, close encounter thing. Even in the kitchen, you're like brushing against each other and all close in close quarters or whatever. But it really is a family, um, you know, environment. Those are my allergies, y'all. And even though this chicken is pretty much cooked or whatever, usually it'll be a little more uh, under. And you, you know you don't want to. You make sure you know you don't want to. You know, dig your hand all into the mixture to contaminate it because you don't want the bacteria to grow from raw chicken inside of something that's already cooked, and then you eat it later or you use it later, and um, it may not. You know, you don't want it to get sick. So. I'm doing the last one here and I'm trying to make some space because it looks like I'm running out, but no, I'm good. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting excited now, y'all. We about almost done. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no too much, no cleanup to do. Pretty much done. So that's what we want. Just like that. Okay. Let me show y'all the end result. Well, not the end end result, but I'm gonna take these gloves off. Okay. So I stayed pretty clean a little bit. Not too messy. I'm gonna wipe this off and we can put something right over top of it. Shove it in the refrigerator. I've got plenty more chicken downstairs in my freezer, so really I can just bake off a whole chicken and use the rest of this to stuff it or whatever, so who knows. I use this uh, foil to cover up the uh, stove, um, the stuffing, um, so I'm just going to add that onto the top so it isn't, it's already covered. Throw it in the refrigerator. Yeah. All right, y'all, this is the Okay. I told you I wanted to add my dill weed or whatever. My hands are wet. Dilly is very distinctive taste, but it's so good. y'all we're gonna add some ground sage just a little bit
And a um, little time. I can't find my dad on oregano. It's okay. This is uh, ground time. I don't want that much. lemon pepper. A little lemon pepper, give it a little lift. A little, little, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. A little bit. A little bit. That lemon goes a long way. Alrighty, and the oven it goes. See this liquid I was talking about? Okay. All right, so we've got liquid release. We've got uh, roasting happening. And 350 is not a roasting temperature. I just had my oven on 350 for the chicken. I should have had it up a little bit more, but I did want to release that juice um, and uh, those uh, the liquid out of there. So now I am going to remove this parchment paper. See that little sauce that it's creating with that garam masala that I added and a little soy sauce and stuff. And then you get the sweetness from the butternut squash. Now this is, you know, I can put it together now. I can already see that the butternut squash is tender enough. So I just want to remove this liquid. I just want to remove the liquid and I'm going to put it back into the oven. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it up to the roasting temperature. The chicken is going to be fine. It'll cook a little faster. That's fine. I'm right here watching it. So, um, and I'll be able to get my vegetables done at the same time as the chicken. Pull the chicken out. The chicken will be done. And while all that is going on, we're going to work on the last project, which is the mashed potatoes, okay? So let me get this drained really quick. I'm going to pull a colander out, which we all know is a strainer. And we're going to do that, um, wash our cutting board, um, and start on the mashed potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and cheat. I'm going to strain the water first. And then I'm going to use the same pot to mix my mashed potatoes with a... Um, last time we used the emulsified blender, I'm going to use a mixer. And we'll incorporate... Um, the whole reason why I want to do that is I want to drain the water real quick so I can throw this cheese on top and it can go ahead and start melting uh, while the potatoes are hot. Uh, <laughs> and this is creating less work for myself. So the potatoes are going over to the sink. So yes, there's a method to my madness. I know how I want my things to turn out. So people are like, why you just didn't use one pan? Cause I didn't want to do that and it wouldn't have came out the same. So I mean, I don't know about nobody else, but I'm a particular chef. 
I know I <laughs> go through a lot of dishes, but I make sure I clean up. So already you can tell that that's a nice, good mixture. It's seasoned well, and uh, it's got a nice sheen and glaze from that uh, from that uh, butternut. I mean, from that uh, brown sugar I added. Mmm. -hmm. I just transferred this from my hand and tasted it. I didn't touch it. But that uh, butternut squash is banging. Mmm. The squash is good. Got a nice flavor. Nice light flavor. I'm going to keep it like that. Usually it would be more seasoned. But that's fine. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more salt later on. And we'll be fine. Um, um, this pan back again. After the journey, I'm gonna go. And I said I was gonna do that the opposite way around, but it's all happening at one time. I'm throwing these on, and really now it's just the liquid. I mean, not the, the oil that's that's on there, which is good. It'll um, absorb in there, and there's a little bit of juice that came out. I'm gonna throw these back in the oven, turn the temperature up, and get started on the mashed potatoes. I told y'all I'd be doing stuff that suits me to say uh, to say it in a uh, in a nice way. But y'all see, I ain't even peeled these potatoes. I ain't trying to be funny or whatever like that. But uh, the skin on the potatoes is healthy anyway. I usually do uh, peel my potatoes, but I did not feel like doing it today. So <laughs> and it's quicker. So y'all see, I'm cutting this cheese up. Fresh block of mozzarella cheese. Caught them on sale. I said, uh-uh, let me go get a whole bunch of them joints and freeze it so I can make some macaroni and cheese when I feel like it. Hey, hey. I see how easy that was, right? Save myself time. Ain't no shredding involved. Nothing like that. Um... Don't judge me. I don't do this to everybody's food, but um, I, 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 I can't. Y'all know what I'm about to say. Y'all will know what I'm talking about in a minute. Yes, a stick 
and a half butter for my potatoes. I can't. I have to have buttery potatoes. This is, what is it? Unsalted, unsalted. It's like less than one and a half, okay? That's not a lot. Calm down. Calm down. That was for my video, y'all. <laughs> I'm going ahead and I'm adding my milk now. Everything is hot. So, well, the milk was cold, but that's why I'm doing it now. I can actually steep it a little bit, which is just a little slight steam by putting it on low so that cheese and the butter uh, and, and uh, milk can come up to temperature uh, and melt as well. Y'all see some other steps I took a little longer because that's how I wanted the quality of my food to come in. But other things I, I ne not necessarily rushed, but I um, took shortcuts. And in cooking, that's what you have to learn how to do. Take shortcuts and know what's going to take the longest, what's going to take the shortest, what can I do to rush it, what can I do to get it done. Depending on, you know what I'm saying, but at, at the end of the day, I don't want to be in the kitchen all day. I love what I do, but damn, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I was saying all of this said that pretty much you see I didn't get no separate uh, bowl, go in the bowl and do this and do that. Nope, everything was in one pot. I can blend it right in the pot, can leave it in there or take it out. Now, depending on the, sur the surfaces you have in your pot and how old they are, you don't want to do that. You don't want to scrape the bottom. You don't want those uh, chemicals to uh, scrape off or, or, you know, off of the pan, but you know. If you've done it sometimes and you know not to go all the way down in there and, and uh, completely shred up the daggone bottom or whatever like that, you know, you're fine. Um, let me go ahead and clean up. It's not much to clean up, but let me go ahead and tidy up to my liking. Uh, everything is... Everything is uh, coming together. And matter of fact, I was gonna, um, I was gonna <laughs> cut y'all off, but let me just change y'all view while I do what I do. How about that? All right.
Hey, yeah. Yeah. Luego. Kilo.
All right, y'all, last project. Let me get it together. All right, it's the last project. Let me get it together. Everything is cleaned up. Okay. Times. See the vegetables are done i am stopping them at that point okay so i want them to be uh still uh not so much roasted but just uh they're not steamed a little bit of roasted it could be even more roasted but i don't want them to be um to be completely dried out i do want that um a little bit of that moisture and liquid Sorry, I was trying to make sure I explained correctly about that. But if you can see about that, they're roasted or whatever about that. But if you continue to roast them like that, they'll get smaller. They'll get more, um, even they can even get, uh, they won't get mushy like that. But if you have them on a low temperature, they will get mushy because you're uh, baking or steaming it. And yeah. <laughs> Chicken is done. Okay. And you can tell, I'm gonna put it in to crisp it up and I'm gonna turn the temperature all the way up. Turning it all the way up to 400 uh, so it can get a little bit more crisp like I want it to on the, um, on the on the chicken and the uh, vegetables okay it's not going to dry it out uh if you see in the oven if you were paying attention um you see that the uh you know due to the looseness of the um of the uh stuffing and stuff like that that it spreads so i just kind of pushed it back in that's all okay All right, so I just kind of pushed it in because it was spreading out a little bit. I didn't want it to come out. 
but I do want that, you know, that rustic look or whatever like that, so it'll be fine, but when I crank the oven up and crisp it up, it'll come out, it'll look a little bit better to my liking. It's still moist and everything like that, so we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The answer is that way. Chicken teriyaki. Hey. All right. Let's finish this bad boy up. You already got a preview of the vegetables. You already got a preview of the chicken. I will go ahead and just conclude maybe a slight video or either a visual like I always do of the end product. But pretty much you've seen it already. This is the potatoes. Uh, if I need to add more milk, uh, it's right here. Uh, we'll see what we're working with. I have my butter, my cheese, my milk, uh, my seasonings that I already added. Uh, so, let's go. Skin on potatoes. Usually people do red potatoes. This is regular. Regular potatoes. With the skin on, nothing wrong with it. Okay. I already like that consistency that I'm getting, so I don't think I'm going to add any more um, milk. I like my mashed potatoes creamy and rich and thick. That clicking too is the size, it's not the bottom of the pan, so it's not scraping. You still see the steam is hot. Incorporating everything. Now some people they like lumpy mashed potatoes and stuff like that. You know, uh, it's a difference between lumpy mashed potatoes, creamy mashed potatoes, and then creamy or lumpy mashed potatoes with the skin on. Uh, I don't mind uh, textural, and I don't like to say lumpy. I don't mind textural potatoes, but it has to be um, well seasoned all the way through. Because if I get a potato and I'm chomping in, I'm like, ooh, that's good. And then I go into a potato that's not seasoned, I'm not going to be too happy. So, uh, for... And... Y'all can do so many things with, with mashed potatoes. You can add cream cheese, sour cream, whatever. I didn't do all that extra today. Uh, it's just butter, milk, good seasonings, and uh, and yeah, that's that's about it. Um, I'm really taking shortcuts today. I didn't even add fresh garlic like I usually do. It has garlic powder in there and garlic salt with a little bit of regular salt. It's not salty. But that good balance of everything will, you know, give it a good lift. A good lift in flavor. So, yeah, mines are creamy, no texture, no lumps. And you just have the skin on. It's so funny, I always get to whip my wrist all hard and stuff like that. And I'm just like, you know what, let me just, I, I always forget. Because I'm so used to whisking or using both of my hands or whatever. or so aggressive sometimes. And I have to realize, boy, let this daggone machine and this mixer do the job. And just go around it. Or let the, you know, the gravity take your hand where, you know, you want it to. That it's going all like that. And then overworking your wrist and overworking the machine too. Because... Um, you don't want your product to be too hot. The machine will cut off on you or... So I can already tell that this is pretty creamy. There's no texture but the, uh, but the skins. But I'm still giving it an extra... 
extra time. I'm gonna, you can see the creaminess. Let's see if I can do this. So that's what I like. Nice, creamy, nice, thick, rich. It's not falling off. It's not running off. You know, it's, it's holding firm. Good mashed potatoes. Let's see what that tastes do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. More salt. I really want to add a half another half a stick of butter, y'all. <laughs> Which I'm going to do. Sorry. I told y'all I like my buttery potatoes. Not too buttery, but. My potatoes are still hot. That's why I like to do this. So it'll, it'll melt down there. And I'll go ahead and continue to blend. So I did add like <laughs> Now let me stop playing y'all I did add a half a teaspoon Of uh, minced garlic Like I said it's good It has a flavor profile but I don't do no type of bland food Or nothing like that so um, I wanted to add a little bit more butter Add a little bit more garlic uh, Fresh garlic or you know minced garlic or whatever like that It's not the freshest to me but it's close I'm adding more Regular salt this is potatoes. Potatoes are a root as well, so um, it requires more, more salt. Am I right? Sometimes I mean, potatoes are a root. I mean, I know it's a vegetable, but I like to make sure I'm giving y'all accurate information. But anywho, it, potatoes require more salt than the average thing. That's all I wanted to notate. So there we go, baby. Oven's on 400. And we're looking good now. Probably like another five to seven minutes on the oven. Continue these mashed potatoes while I uh, get the flavor profile right. I got two hands. It's always a time for a little sip of wine. First, you add the potatoes, and then you take a drink. Julia Child was funny. So 
that was a perfect amount of milk and I didn't even measure. I just poured or whatever like that. So, like, you know, you got to know your quantities and stuff like that, you know. Sometimes it's, you know. All right, so I just wanted to incorporate that. I'm going to mix it one more time. I just want to check this oven. I can smell something. It's not burning, but I can just smell crisp. That's just the bottom of that. Uh, we're good. I took the chicken out. I don't want it to go any further. Hey, hey. Yeah. Migo. Hey, hey. Bring it back up. Hey. All right, yeah, both is out. Oh. Ah. Make sure that butter is incorporated. I'm gonna go around these sides too. Hey. Bad my head off in the way. I be really getting in there when I be mixing. The butter is melted all the way. So yeah, that was two sticks, y'all. But I mean, come on now, it was a whole bag of potatoes. Even if that is a little bit too much than what you'll usually <laughs> put in there, that's your prerogative, not mine. Now, of course, if I was cooking for someone else and I'm going to buy their dietary needs, you know, I would follow that. Yes, I add lemon to my potatoes. It adds a lift. It's also it, um, it's also an acidity. So you'll find that your potatoes go back white. Hey! Uh, uh, uh. Dance with my dogs in the night. A little more salt. Cause I'm telling you all, salt is the natural flavoring. All those seasons I put in here, all of those seasons you put in food, it don't matter without salt. You're not going to taste it. It's a part of building the flavors. Add it a little bit more, add a little bit more, taste it, try it. That's why uh, sometimes I season heavy in the beginning and I know at the end I'll, I can season light. And sometimes I do the reverse effect, like this time, like if it's any boiling involved, because I'm going to pour the water out. Um, some people believe in putting all that stuff in the water, that way it's incorporating those flavors into the meat or into the uh, whatever it is. Uh, depending on what it is, yes, but if it's not a stock that I'm going to keep or I'm going to dump the juice out, then why am I wasting my season going down the drain? So that's why I seasoned light with my potatoes and then I went ahead and I seasoned uh, a little heavier at the end to get it right how I like it. So it just depends. All right, let's give it another taste. I added some more, just especially when you're adding salt. Just be careful, add it, you know, taste more often than I'm just using the back of the spoon. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. <clears throat> Serving like a stir fry. In the kitchen, we're stirring like a stir fry. It
Hey. All right, y'all, that's it. Thank you for joining. Mashed potatoes with the skin on. Let me put my milk away. So it's not sitting out in hot temperatures, okay? We've got our vegetables. Got our vegetables. Woo! Okay. And we've got our stuffed chicken. Okay. Rustic cook quicken. I mean, excuse me, rustic quick cooking. That's all. Didn't want to do anything major tonight, you know. I'm taking my time with you all. Other than that, I would have probably been more relaxed or even done quicker. You know, I don't mind. So, thank you for joining. Remember that life is inevitable through life experiences, knowledge, and understanding. Feel free to chime in, subscribe, be interactive, and check out any of my other playlists to be empowered, entertained, or encouraged. Thank you for joining.